Okay, hi ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. And this is going to be part two of the, I decided to name it Valley View. And one thing I noticed during the previewing of that video was right here, where these clouds separate. I'm not particularly crazy about that, so what I'm gonna do is First thing, so I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna join these these two clouds together and make them just one across there. And to me, that just adds a little more symmetry to the to the overall painting. And then we got a couple spots that I saw could uh, use a little. A little brightening up through here to kind of add to the effect and I'm doing this for just straight white got the same colors out that uh that we had and I don't know what I'm doing wrong but every time I attempt to uh, get the colors put on during editing I don't know if I'm not I mean, I call myself hit and save, and, and I thought I had it figured out, but I'm doing something wrong, just some little something. And I haven't quite figured it out just yet, but I will. But my colors are titanium white, phthalo blue. Nope, let me start over. Titanium white, Prussian blue, midnight black, mountain mix, lizard crimson, Dark Sienna, Van Dyke Brown, Sap Green, Cad Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Indian Yellow, and the Evil Bright Red. And I think, to me, that just, to me, that just that looks so much better across there, joining these two up. Alright, then I will take out my little my little bunny brush and I'll come up here now and I'll just soften these spots up that I just added so they're not just real harsh because it don't it don't take much with this little brush I mean it's it's so delicate And I don't want to sit here and tell you that you've got to use Bob Ross products to do this style of painting. But I mean, they were designed for this style of painting. I mean, this is the style of painting he did. So, of course, you know, having the right tools to do any job is, is going to be helpful. All right, now this is where we're fixing to get into some fun. Remember, I told you this paint was going to get fun. Well, it's just going to get fun. I'm going to come right into my titanium white. And I got about that much. If you can see that. It's it's not a lot. It's, if I had to guess, I'd probably say about a half of an M&M, maybe. And I'm going to put about that same amount or maybe just a little more than that of sap green in this, into the white. And I'm going to mix these two colors. And I'm thoroughly mixing these two colors. I don't, I'm not going to leave them marbled. These colors will be mixed. And the color I'm going for is a light green. And then I'm going to take and add just a little bit, about half that amount of the uh, Prussian blue. And then that's going to turn it into a, a darker green, but it's going to have a blue, a blue hue to it. If you can, if you can look at that color on my knife and tail. 
that's the color we ended up with, and that's about the amount we ended up with. So I'm gonna go back up here and pull it all off and pull it out flat as I can get it on my on my palette here. Then I'll wipe off my knife. <coughs> Excuse me. Then I'm gonna pick up a one inch brush. Just a regular one inch brush. And I'm gonna tap it in to the green paint. And then I'm gonna lay that brush kind of down at an angle and push up. Just like that. See, there's nothing on this side. It's only on this side. Now this is where it gets fun. We come up here and we look at our our layout here. You can see where our mist is. So we all, we want to stay under that mist because we want the separation. So with that being said, if we come in here and start right here just just tapping on just lightly tapping across here and coming up kind of at an angle we can come up and then we can kind of make a little peak right here but we don't want a sharp peak we want it we want it kind of rounded you know we more of a heel, I should say, than a peak. And then we want to come off that. And then and then right in here, we can come in here a little taller. See, because our mist goes up higher right here. And even even if you go out of the mist right here, that's fine too. Because you got mist here. So I mean you've already created your separator. All right, then we want to want to bring this back down, just like so. Just like that, and just fill in across here. Then we can come up in here where it's a little taller and join up right here. And then come down again. And all I'm doing, I'm just, I'm just using uh, the the mist as my guide. And I'm just, I'm coming across here. And where I can get away with it, I'm going a little higher. And where I can't, I'm just keeping it under it. But I want to, uh, I want this all the way across. This little. This little uh, plane, I guess, is what we're building here. We're building a little, a little plane. And then we want to just keep it going across here, like so. <clears throat> now, over here on this side, uh, one of the neat effects that you can do is, like, over here... You can bring it down a little further, like make it thicker on this side, and then over here on this side, kind of, kind of come down at a, at an angle, to come over here and kind of join up on this side, like so. And as long as you keep your lay of the land headed that way, this this will look like, this will look like it's a. Uh, creating a, an angle across here that will that give you a oh what's the word I'm looking for here this is what makes my video so long I can't think of the words I'm trying to say because I don't really know what this would be called but it's it's an effect that that uh it's just giving you a slant you know a, a it makes it look like the land is, is closer here than here. Like it's just fading off across here like this. And the reason 
the reason we're going to be able to get away with this effect is because of the next steps that we're going to do. All right, see that right there looks plain to me. I don't like that. That's just not natural looking. To me, that looks better like that. That other one just looked like we was trying too hard to make it fit in there. <laughs> All right, now, what we done, well, I still don't like that. I'm going to go back and work on this again. Yeah, I can get away with that. I like that better. Yeah. Now it looks natural. What we done up here is we gave ourselves a sunny side and we gave ourselves a shadow side. And we're going to do the same thing in here. And this is really going to help define this area. And we're going to do that with our Prussian blue. We're going to come up here and just tap. Just barely tap a little Prussian blue on our brush. Not much at all. We do not want much Prussian blue right now. Okay, everywhere that we got a little high spot, you can come on the left side of it since that's our shadow side. You can come on that left side and you can just kind of create you a little, a little darker a little darker spot across here. See how we did that? Just a little bit darker spot. And then come up and get you a little more blue. And believe me, it does not take much blue to do this at all. Then we can come right in here with a little and kind of come down. And if you see how I'm doing that, I'm tapping down at a kind of at a, at a slight angle. Not much, just and trying to trying to ensure that it that it kind of follows the lay of the land. If you can see that, see how it see how it kind of just follows the lay of the land across here. And then you can come back. You know, if you got it built up a little too much, you can always come back and just just lightly tap it in, like so. See how we did that? Then we can come up here and get a little bit more. Because this this side here is going to be light. The majority of this side is going to be light. So you can come in here at the top of this one and put it in just a little bit of shadow. Just a little bit. We don't need much right in here. Just just enough to that you can tell that that mountain is blocking the sunlight from it. But at the same time, you still got light coming across. So that light's going to strike it in a couple places. And that's what we're going to determine next. We're going to determine where does the light strike it at. <coughs> I hope this is making sense. Okay, just like this. I want that to come across. But if you if you can see, I don't see. I don't know if the camera's showing it or not. Because I'm looking at a little bitty monitor over here. I have a little. Well, actually, it's my phone, and it's in a real small screen, so I don't have a. I'm gonna figure out a way to hook it up to my TV to where I can. I'll be painting just like I'm watching it on YouTube, on TV. And then that way, I can see what you see on camera. Because I can't see nothing until I see it on TV myself. Or the computer screen when I go to editing. And sometimes I don't even edit no more. There's no sense in it. All right, now. We basically created little planes in here you can see them I hope you can so I'm gonna come into my thinner and I'm gonna get just a little and if you saw that one video you know how much a little thinner is now it's very little and I'm gonna come straight into my cad yellow now there is some green on the brush 
and some of it's going to come off into the paint, and that's perfectly fine because it's not much. I'm going to tap straight cad yellow on this brush. Now this side's going to be in light. So if you figure that sun's coming across here like this, all of this right in here is going to be lit up. This is going to be this is going to be a lot brighter on this side. And where the where it's brighter at, it's going to come it's going to come right into the right into the uh, dark and it'll give it that that dimension it needs. Now this is a very light tap. We don't we don't want to tap this real real heavy because I'm not looking for smooth grass in this paint. I'm looking for that I don't know what you call it, but I always call it that fuzzy looking grass that Bob does in so many paintings. It's that well it's this. It's what I'm doing now, this grass. And if you if you wanted to, you could come back and, and tap on this until it just got smooth. I mean just it'd be as smooth as the blue down here. But sometimes sometimes I don't like this kind of grass in my paintings. But then sometimes a painting just cries for it. You know, it, that's that's the kind you gotta have. And this is and this painting, this is basically it. You know, this is the this is one of them paintings that this is the kind of grass we gotta have. So And to do this kind of grass is I'm telling you, it is a it is a very light touch. And you gotta have paint on the brush. So, you know, if you come up here with not enough paint on the brush, you'll never get this effect. It's just not going to be there for you. It requires paint on the brush. And you get that by, just like I said earlier, you know, if you watched that one video I did, I'll tell you what, just in case you didn't watch that video, let me show you what I'm doing here. You can see this. I'm going up here and I'm pulling my paint out flat, looks like so. And then I come back and lay it down and push up. And every time I come back to load it, when my when my hand disappears, all I'm doing is coming down here then and just tapping a little of it. And then when I run out, I pull a little more down. And what that does is gives you that little ridge that you seen right there. It gives you that ridge on the brush. See it? Now that little ridge of paint don't go far, but you know, if you know where you're going with it, you don't need it to go far. All right, I'm gonna come across here with this one, just like so. See my hand disappeared, I'm going back to get some more paint, and all I did was push up on that little ridge again. This across here like so. And then we'll come over here and add a couple. About like that. Come up here. Now these colors have got to kind of blend together at some point. But all you got to do to blend them together is just lightly tap where they, where they would meet up. And that's going to kind of knock your, your fuzziness out. But I'm going to show you how to bring that right back in. Because we're going to have to. But even at that, it don't kill it all. Because this next step, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and wash this brush right quick. Beat the devil out of it. Okay, now I'm coming into straight titanium white. And I'm doing it the same way that we just did it in that yellow. 
pulling a little bit of it out flat and just tapping it on. Okay, if our sun's coming across here, there's going to be a couple spots that's, that that sun's just really hitting. You know, it, it's going to be, it's going to be lit up pretty good. Now, this effect will go to, go to looking so good when you're doing it, you'll get greedy. <laughs> you'll, you'll want it to, you'll want the whole thing to look that good. And just remember, the only spots that's supposed to look that good is the high spots. Because down in these low spots, you're not going to have that, that much sunlight. Because that sun's coming across like this. So by doing just just what we're going to call high spots, now we're creating a high spot, so, and we're just now creating them. Everywhere, everywhere we do this, this little, this little white at, we, we're creating a high spot. And, and you can see them come out. I mean, they just pop out, just boom. And the reason they do that is because you got a dark color to work with them. Without that dark color, this this effect would not work. It, it just it looks so. It just looks like you put white paint up here, and that's it. Now through here, you can have spots to where it just it comes through the through the mountain. You know where the where there's a little hole that in the mountain that just kind of lets the color come through. And wherever you had them little spots at, you can just add them in. <coughs> and it just it just adds character almost. I mean it just it just makes it look like that paint just just added a, a whole lot of sunbeam through here. Just like that. And then you can come down under this shadow right here. And it just makes it look like it's, like that spot there is just hid by the mountain. Because in, in you know, in, in real life it would be. I mean, that spot would be, it would remain dark. But about like that's all you need. Then you can come back up here. Well, let's wash this brush first. All right, now we're going to take us a one-inch brush. I'm sorry, a two-inch brush. And we're going to come right here at the edge of this. And we're just going to tap the very tip edge of it. That's all we want to do. Just, just the bottom edge of it. And this is, I'm tapping, I'm tapping this pretty hard. But I'm not going up very far either. I'm just tapping out the bottom here. That's all I want is the bottom gone. I want to create a little a little layer of mist down here. Along the bottom. Like so. And if you have to if you have to pick up some white paint. Just remember, anytime you have to do this and you come up here, don't don't try to put all your paint in one spot. Because if you do, you're going to have a big white glob in one area, and that's not what we want. Kind of just spread your paint out. Even if you have to come up here and, and, and pull it out before you start. Before you start uh, tapping it. Because even at that, you're still going to get the white and green effect. It's, it's not going to be solid white, which is fine. That, that white and green effect is fine for this, for this particular part right here. And then just very, very gently come in here and pull this color. Just very gently, I mean very, just pull this color across and kind of blend it out. All right, we'll get 
that portion of that. <coughs> now we're going to pick our fan brush up. And this is just the number six fan brush. And we're going to come right into some Prussian blue. And pull it over to the side with the fan brush. Then we're going to pick up straight sap green and bring it right into that blue. These colors are probably 50 50 mixed, if I had to guess. I'd say about the same amount of blue as green. Because you're going you're gonna to get a bluish green color. I can tell you now, it's not going to be a, a big secret here. And we want to start over here. Well, it don't matter where you start, really. But if you start on this side, over here, you want to start out small and stay under the mist. Just start out kind of kind of small over here on this side. And work with the tip, the very top part of this brush, because that way you can see where your mist is and you're not playing a guessing game with it. You can... But at the same token, keep your trees standing straight up, too. Because if you don't, your trees are going to go to leaning on you, and that's just not going to look right. You have a bunch of leaned over trees out here that <laughs> just ain't going to look right. So have you have your trees standing up, looking, you know, straight, and, and kind of let them get smaller as they go back in the distance over here. And we're going to play these trees across. That's what we're fixing to do. All the way across. Just, just going to, like, bring them all the way across the canvas. But the thing of it is, we gotta, we got to keep in mind where our Oh, uh, yeah. Our mist line is. And they're just to start getting, getting a little taller out here. Now, if you don't, if you don't have these trees standing up in the right direction, right through here, it's going to throw your whole perspective off. So keep that in mind. These trees have to be. They have to be standing the right way. I mean, it had to be. And if you go to running out of your, your color you made, you know the two colors, it's just sap green and blue, so just go back and pick you up some more and make you up a little more. And then when you come back up, you're always going to have darker colors, so come over a few of your lighter color trees first and then start kind of working them in. Get all the way across is what we're looking for.
Because here in a few minutes we're gonna we're gonna do a treectomy. <laughs> we're gonna come across here and we're gonna chop the bottom off these trees and we're gonna make them look right. That's really about far as we need to go right there. About like so. And I'm gonna bring just a little bit more dark color in here and clean some of these up to make them look more detailed. All right, about like so. Now we're gonna pick us up a clean, dry two inch brush. Now this part right here can get kind of tricky on you if you if you're not real careful. So what you want to do is I found for me the easiest way to do this this part right here is to start over here and just come in here and come straight down. Just come straight down. Real light. See how I'm doing that? Just real light. And kind of keep this, this line as straight as you can across here. But at the same token, you got to remember when you come down with this line to come down a little further than you did over here right beside it. If that makes any sense. See how you gotta you gotta start your line in the same spot, but when you come down, you gotta come down a little further each time. And each time you gotta come straight down. And believe me right now, it's so tempting to want to go at an angle. I mean it really is. But you cannot you you can't do the angle. You gotta keep these straight down. Now I know in your mind you may be thinking, well the shadow is way taller than the uh, trees above it. And you'd be right. You would be absolutely right. But with that being said, we're fixing to come up here and we're going to add a whole new item to our painting. Let's see how we pull these straight down. And by pulling them straight down like that, at that angle across here, see what that does? It gives us that, that straight line. Now, <laughs> I know I'm getting real tedious on y'all here, but come back at that, at the base of that line. And if you just touch on just a little white on your brush, very little, come back right at the base of that line. Okay. And tap on some white. And this is not snow, trust me. <laughs> This is mist, but we want this, we want it, we want to, this is going to do two things. You'll see right here in just a second what we're doing here, and it'll, it'll go to making sense to you. It's going to add a little bit of mist to the water, which you probably won't see, but it's also going to give us a mist line up here at our trees. And you may see some of that, you may not. He's going to come up here and pull it straight up. Straight up. Just like so. And what this will do, if you do it right and don't, don't come up too high, is it will give you trees above it a sharp point, which makes them look more like trees. 
and it'll pull a little of that white in between the trees and it'll give them a separation across here. Kind of like, kind of like you can see space in between some of them. All right, now is when you want to come across with your reflection to make them look like they're sitting in the water. Just like so. And then you can come back up here again and pull this up. And it'll take out all that brush stroke. And it still will keep your reflection looking in the water. All right, we'll go ahead and put this brush in the thinner. Now we're going to pick us up a knife. We're going to go up here into Van Dyke Brown, pull it down flat. And get pick up a little roll of Van Dyke Brown on a knife. And we're going to come under here. And we just want to just kind of randomly touch along the bottom here. And we don't want it straight or we don't want to pull it out. We just, we, we want to just tap this color in and keep it, keep it as straight as you can. You know, if some of it runs out in the water, well, that's fine too. We ain't going to cry about it. But if you can kind of, if you can kind of keep it straight across here, that effect will work out a little better for you. And then in some places, if you can stay under the, under the mist, that's a good thing too. But if you can't, it don't matter. The effect will still work. And it don't take a lot of paint to do this. It's just, it looks like a lot of paint because we're picking it up on a knife. And when you touch it up here on the canvas, it just, and it pulls off, it, it pulls off in, I don't want to say globs because it's not really globs, but it pulls off in, in different amounts. It'll pull off more here than it did over there. And, and believe it or not, that's the effect we want right here. We want it to be different all the way down this bank. We don't want it to be the same hardly nowhere. We just want what's up here to be, to be straight. We don't want an angle. Where it's at is not really as important as, as it being straight right now. All right, about like that's what we was looking for over there. Then we want to pick up just a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of dark sienna and we want to kind of marble mix these two and a little titanium white. And just kind of marble mix these colors on the on the palette and get just a little roll and come back up here and we're gonna tap this the same way just tap it in, in certain places across here just just let that let that paint pull off in certain places just don't do it everywhere. Just let it let it pull off in certain places across here. Because the effect we're going for right now is we want this to look like a <clears throat> like a rocky bank over here. And we don't wanna we don't want this color piled up in one spot either. We want it we want it spread out enough that we can see our dark. We don't want to pull it. We just want to tap it on in certain places. Because if you go up here and you tap it on, it's going to get that, that rugged look, that real rough rock look. About like that. Then 
you want to come up here and get us some more Van Dyke Brown. And we'll come right over here. And we'll come in on this side right here. And we'll just kind of tap out into the water a little ways. About like that. Just, just kind of run it out here like so. Then and then back in here if you wanna if you kinda wanna do a um like a bigger rock sitting out in the water, you can come up here with your knife and you can kick you off a pretty decent size stone out here in the just sitting out here in the water like so uh, I'll tell you what we'll bring this all across you ain't gonna see this back here in a few minutes anyway but but for now we'll about like that. that's all you gotta do and we're gonna go ahead and work on this side first Cause this side here is going to be, it's going to be fun. All right. First thing we need to do is get us some, get us some white up here. We got to get us a water line over here now. Now to do this water line, remember, you always got to keep your water line straight. So you may have to, you may have to saw your water line across here. To make it to make it stay under these under these rocks in certain places because if you go to pulling that water line across and you see to where it's not going to go back up in there don't turn your knife like this keep the knife level even if you have to even if you have to come in here again you know and just work it in like so keep that Keep that knife level. And I hope that makes sense. Because there's there's not much worse if you look at a pain and your water lines are going up the hill or coming down the hill unless it's in a running uh, like a little stream or something and you want to put the little splashy uh, little splashy water marks or water areas were splashing up on the bank. You know, in those type of situations, you can get away with it. But in a flat, kind of still water situation, you really need it. You got to have straight water lines. <laughs> That's just all there is to it. And if you get over in here and the, and the brown goes to mixing with the water, don't let that scare you. That's not a bad thing. There's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And then you may have to swap over to your little edge. And if you do, well, that little edge will make water lines too. Just like so. The chances you see in many of these water lines back here, you know, you probably won't see many. What you'll see is like little little spots out in the water. You know, you're not gonna see real well defined water lines back here. You'll just see plus once you come up here and start putting your highlights on, you probably won't even see that. But up through here, you know, you just you may see some a couple of small water lines. Nothing real major. And then on your rock, you'll probably see a water line. And on your rock, just remember, they gotta be straight too.
But now we're going to come back and put a little reflection on that rock here in a few minutes. But that's a few minutes from now. Because I ain't 100% sure if we're going to do that yet or not. We'll have to just wait and see where, how this goes. Okay, I was fixing to do something. Yeah, I know what it was. I think I can get a different fan brush here. Now, I am going to make me up another color with the blue, the, the Prussian blue, and the sap green again. Okay. Let me get this to where you can see it. Even if you miss some of the other stuff, you'll be able to see this part of it. All right, I'm loading my brush up. I'm going to come right up here at the base of this mountain. And I'm going to come straight down. I'm going to make up a little bit more paint. all the way down to here just like so and we'll come up here to this tree and turn this brush sideways I want to drop down from the point a little bit and start with a slight touch and just start very slowly tapping this back and forth back and forth now you can do these fast after you've learned how to do them. And believe it or not, when I tell you this, it's not a lie. You can do these faster. And sometimes when you do them faster, they actually work out better. Because they go to picking up these little Now we're gonna come right across this brown. We're not even gonna we're not even gonna let that bother us enough. And we're gonna soon that coming across this brown, we kept our same shape. And then we're going to bring it right out, just like we kept our same shape, like we never messed up. <laughs> and I know what you're thinking. Well, Harold, how's that going to look right? It will, trust me. Because we are, we are good like that. Up a little bit more of the Prussian blue and a little bit more of the sap green because now we got some brown in it, remember? <laughs> and we're gonna come right up here and we'll come up just a little bit taller, about like so, and we'll drop down just a little bit. Most of the time when I'm doing these trees, I don't, I don't put as much attention to detail in them because, God, you see so many of them, you know. I mean, everybody knows that this is the tree Bob made, and, you know, he's, he's told the story on his show literally hundreds of times that, that this is a, 
some lady called them the Z trees and I mean he's told us how to make these trees more times than we got fingers and toes and uh, I mean they we continue to make them you know I mean they've been they've been them trees forever this is kind of like a staple of uh of the wet on wet process you know these trees and you can you can either do this kind or you can do the kind that that you pull straight down your trunk and then push up rather than down and it'll give you the ones that has the the bent upward leaves in it or uh, needles <clears throat> But with, with these trees right here, you can come back and do so much in uh in highlight. I mean that's that's really where they come to life at is in highlight. So keep that in mind too. Alright, now I'm gonna go ahead and wash this brush. But before I do, I'm gonna come right here and I'm gonna pull down a a little bit of this rock highlight and then I'll put them across like so now that we got our tree in here and I'll bring this water line out here now we'll make him look like he's sitting in the water and I'll take a little bit of this Highlight we used up here. And we'll give him a we'll give him a little top like so. This ringtone belongs to your daughter. That's right. We're talking about the daughter. 